Hi gang, Scott here. In this video, I want to explain the smart presets that are in Radiant Photo. Now, Radiant Photo is a product I talked about a few weeks ago. It was in pre-release. The software is out now. It's available. It's an AI-powered editor, you know, the new kid on the block, but uh, it's an evolution of Perfectly Clear from IQ if you ever used that product or looked into it. And uh, I'm using it in a couple of spots in my workflow. Uh, take a look at the overall review video I did of it to get a, get a taste for that. But uh, what I want to talk about here is the smart presets. This is the AI power that's within Radiant Photo. You bring a photo in, it figures out what it sees, what it detects, and then applies a certain set of adjustments for it. But it's not just adjustments, it's doing things at a, a very granular level, literally pixels. It's looking at individual pixels compared to other pixels, a whole bunch of super stuff there. And then, you know, the, the, the technicals of it honestly go over my head but I like the results. And I want to explain smart presets because these are key to understanding what's going on. When Radiant Photo first opens an image, it uses its AI smarts to look around the photo and figure out what elements are there. What kind of photo is this? And that's what these different categories are underneath smart presets. I do think it's better to think of these as categories uh, as, and not as like classic presets, which are below and are different. And I'll talk about those in a different video. But for smart presets, you have all of these different categories. And we can see food and drink was detected. You know, Radiant Photo looked at this and said, well, this is a photo of food or drink. It's some sort of you know food photo. Let me use that category, that smart preset, and apply some changes. And we can see that it did some smart editing with a certain strength and a certain color, a certain exposure. If I switch to the detailed edit, we'll see other changes it made, super contrast at 15, um, and looks like that's fundamentally at some sharpening here, those sorts of things. So, you know, the pretty gentle touch to it, but look at the difference here. I mean, this is this is night and day, and I did nothing. And anytime I bring a photo into Radiant Photo, it's detected as food and drink. This is what's going to happen. It's going to just make the photo better. And where the, the smart presets get interesting is you have different like classes or groups of these smart presets. So I think this is going to be best explained by example. But think about these as categories, these smart presets are categories. What is the photo detected as? And then based on the group of presets you've chosen, what's the settings that'll be applied for it? So here we have Pro. Let's switch this over to Subtle. I'll get this warning. Hey, I'm going to change this smart preset collection. And that basically means Radiance going, I'm going to go look at all your photos again recategorize them, you know, detect them, they'll be detected the same way, but I'm going to apply the settings from this new group you just told me about. I'll say yes. Once again, the photo was detected as food and drink, but we do see some changes. Not so much in the smart editing. If I scroll back upward here, we see got some exposure, super contrast, a little lower, and uh, oops, I actually just changed that by mistake. Let me undo that to 11. And also, there's less sharpening. This was 100 before, now it's 55. These are smaller changes. But that's the difference between the Radiant Photo Pro set of smart presets and subtle. They are just subtler presets. Why the two groups? You know, why is this interesting? Why would you care? Well, it does depend on your workflow. If you are taking unedited, untouched photos and handing them to Radiant Photo right away, the Pro category is the better choice. It's going to do more. It's going to just do more for your photo. But if your workflow is, well, I start in Lightroom or I start in Photoshop and I like to do a couple of things, my basics that I always do in all my photos, and then I want to use other tools like Radiant Photo, Subtle is a good choice for that because you've already done some of that work in a different tool. You don't necessarily want to double down on sharpening or vibrance or whatever it might be. So you can have a, a more tailored smart preset. And that brings us to the third category, which is my smart presets, where you get to control what's set for 
any of these categories in smart presets. Now this starts to get powerful. Let's, let's, let's talk about this in uh, my smart preset vein. So let's say, you know, I, I like what this subtle did, but uh, I want something a little bit, a little bit different. Um, I did like more sharpening. So I'll move that back to a hundred, for example. And, you know, um, super contrast I was okay with, but I want a little bit of light diffusion. I just like that kind of look. And this is a subtle one on this photo. Let me push that up really far so you can see something happen. And then I'll undo that. Anyway, I like a little bit of that light diffusion. And uh, for my tastes, I want a little bit more color so I can increase that ever so slightly. See, this is how I want my food and drink photos to be processed. And so now I can save this as my own smart preset. So the next food and photo, uh, food and drink photo I bring into Radiant will be auto detected and my settings get applied. So let's do that. In the smart presets area, this triple dot, and you're going to save preset. First, make sure you choose my smart presets. You now just underneath I have preset folders and I've got you know a bunch of different things that are over in that lower left corner. Not interested in that right now. That's what, those are different kinds of presets. Those are more classic presets. We'll choose my smart presets. The preset I want to save over, meaning what category of photo do you want all of these settings that you've just applied to be used. So next time I detect a food and drink photo, if I choose my smart presets, all of those things I just set will be done. Great. I go save that. And now in my smart preset category, when I bring in another food and drink photo, it will be detected and my settings will be applied. Um, let, let's go ahead and do that now. So first let me switch over to my smart presets. Say yes, I want to reprocess. And we can see the settings haven't changed because the last thing I did was save my smart preset. But let me open up another photo of food. Okay, we see food and drink has been detected. I'm in my smart presets and I can see that change I made to color. The super contrast light diffusion is there. That sharpening is where I want it. Zero work on my part. Everything is where I want it now, and I can continue with processing here. Like here, I want to do some cropping, get tighter on the, on the pasta, all that type of thing there. But that's how these smart presets are working. So you can choose what settings you want for the AI to pick and apply when Radiant Photo says, I found a landscape, or I found a photo of a person, or a black and white image or food and drink, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So that's how smart presets work. And this is how you can kind of teach the AI, guide the AI for what you really like. Let the AI figure out what's there, but you have some control over what gets applied and what gets tweaked. And this gets very powerful if you are using, say, Lightroom as your asset manager, because what Radiant Photo has done with the Lightroom plugin gets very intriguing because you can just batch things over have the AI auto detect it, apply your settings based on the type of photo it is, have it all come back to Lightroom. I'll put together a different video on that, so be on the lookout for it. Uh, it's a very intriguing and very powerful workflow to speed things up and get you to your final images faster. Uh, but that's going to do it for this video. I hope you found it interesting and useful. If you've got questions, go ahead and drop them below. And until next time, my name's Scott Davenport. Have fun.